G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People. Now, I know it's been a while since I've covered this subreddit, and please hold on tight for our first story. There is a bit of wild grammar going on, and it's hard to follow the story, but it does get clarified in the comments, and it will make sense at that point. Now I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn of the barbie, and get ready for a bloody good story. Let's go. Move your grandson and let your niece live there. I have two brothers, we're five years apart, so when I ran off to see the world, baby brother 50 was eight years old. Not the brother I'm talking about though. This is middle brother who is 55. Our great grandfather was an actual coal baron. He owned several mines, had his own trucks, and even a spur RR line to send the coal to the main tracks. Our grandfather bought land alongside a main river and built a coal tipple to load the coal and others onto barges to be sent down river to where it was needed. Before he died, grandfather sold it all. It was in the late 1960s. Kept enough money for him and grandmother and then the rest was put into trusts for kids and grandkids. At age 21, I was given $322,000. I bought a car and a motorcycle, and then thanks to my grandmother's wise advice, I forgot that I had it. I just left it in the trust. That was until she found the farm for sale, so I snapped it up. The house needed work, so I brought everything up to code and put a lot of insulation in. Later on, I bought one of those half-round steel garages, and over the years, it's been turned into a living space. Quite nice, people call it the cave. A buddy sprayed a few inches of foam on the walls and we painted it grey. It's tucked back into the tree line and needs no AC in the summer. Heat is a wood-burning stove. Plenty of wood too, wireless, great digital TV signals, several friends and family members have stayed there when they needed a place. Since the property is far closer to my grandson's high school than their house, my daughter let him and a buddy live there for almost three years. He starts college at the same school that my niece is going to for graduate school. She needed a place to stay, and her mom asked me, and I said of course. The problem started two days ago with the grandson calling, asking if I told my brother him and his friend had to move into the half round, and give the house to his cousin, and a previously unmentioned friend. Oh, no. I didn't, so he told his uncle to F off, and handed the phone to MB. After a very short argument on how unsatisfactory it was for his golden child and how bratty my grandson was, they left. When he hung up on me, I texted his wife and said the deal was off thanks to MB. I answered one text from her explaining what happened. I refused to answer MB's calls or texts asking me to change my mind. BB called me laughing. MB called him on the verge of tears, begging for him to change my mind. So, he did beg me. Begged me to charge them the standard rate for rent for this. With utilities included, that would be around $12,000 a year. Get the first and last, plus sign a two-year lease. His wife, my sister-in-law, is a lawyer. She'll write a great lease. And he said that she offered. Now, long ago, my sister-in-law came to ask me if her friend, a victim of domestic abuse, could hide there. You don't say no to that, but to her, it was an act of kindness, and she could find nowhere else at the time. I told my baby brother to have her draw it up, and I sent it. I made grandson the landlord. My baby brother and sister-in-law got to work on it, and every base is covered. My middle brother has the lease, but I've not heard back. Our mother would be mad at me, and my dad would laugh. He is still alive, but dementia took his mind and memories. And in the comments, OP says, I put a lot of run-on sentences in that, didn't I? Sorry, folks. I'm old. Get off my lawn. I still tracked it, though. Uh, the bit with your sister-in-law offering to, and then subsequently actually drawing up the lease, made me snicker coffee out my schnoz. <laughs> what the hell? So to recap, you own a farm with a house and a mother-in-law unit slash ADU. You let your grandson live in the house for the back half of high school and now for college. Middle brother's daughter, your niece, asked to live there for college and you said yes. Niece and your middle brother then demanded the farmhouse rather than the mother-in-law unit and pitched a fit when you said, ha, no. 
Middle brother is now having a fit. You and youngest brother wrote up a formal lease naming your grandson as a landlord. Nasty piece of work niece, by the way of middle brother, has not responded. Our next post is by user I have no idea 098. Titled Entitled Racist Karen Wants Other Parents' Children. So a few years ago, I was a student studying in childcare. Now, as a part of my course, I am meant to one day a week work in a private nursery. For people who don't know what a nursery is, it's basically preschool, I think, to get some experience. So whilst I was there for a year, I became very close with the staff members and the children that were there. And during the summer, a new child was enrolled into the nursery. The little girl, we will call her Mary because her favourite song was Mary Has a Little Lamb. Now, Mary is an adorable little girl who likes to jump around and give everyone hugs and kisses. A bowl of fluff is what she is. Mary is a bit slightly chubby for a three-year-old, but that's okay. No problem with a little bit of chub. But her mum thought otherwise. Her mum, who will name Karen, is this tall white lady who was American who moved to our country last year. Mary didn't look anything like Karen. Mary is a black child, but that isn't a problem to us since everyone's families come in different sizes and shapes. But I had to point this out since it'll become important later. The nursery closes at around 6pm since we're a private nursery but Karen always comes late by an hour to pick up Mary. Now, usually, we would give the parents an hour time limit to pick up the children before we hand out warnings, and if a third warning is invoked, well, I think the manager said she'll call Child Protective Services. Now, Karen always takes the piss and ensures she picks up Mary barely before the hour, looking like a, excuse my choice of words, an H-O-E. She would show up with her flush red face, a tight, slim, skinny dress that shows off either her cleavage or ass, and caked in an excessive amount of makeup. Now, this isn't a big deal until the summer trip starts coming around the corner. It was a trip to a big theme park in my country. Everyone was buzzed, especially the staff members, since this is basically a free trip for them since the nursery is paying for it. The children will be with their parents or guardians, so we didn't have to take care of them and just go wild with alcohol on the rides. On the day of the trip, Karen came along as usual in a tight dress, high heels, pungent perfume, and excessive amounts of makeup. She looks like she dressed for some sort of a formal party, whilst the other parents are dressed in casual clothing, preparing themselves for war. Remember, our staff members don't have to look after the kids on this trip, and it's the parents and guardians' responsibility to do so. Before we left off for our trip, Karen noticed one of the children, a beautiful toddler whom I'll name Anna, with blonde pigtails and bright blue eyes. Karen walked up to her mother, whom she held hands with and said something quite disturbing, to the point Anna's mother requested to our staff to help keep a distance from her. The exchange went as follows. Karen, that's a cute girl. A.M. Aw, thank you. She's our pride and joy. Karen, she has such beautiful crystal blue eyes and blonde hair. Her skin is so fair and pale. A.M. Yeah, yeah, she is beautiful. A bit creeped out, though. Karen, I wish Mary looked like her. A.M. looks at Mary and says, Aw, Mary is also a beautiful girl, too. Karen scoffs and says, yeah, right. If anything, I want a baby girl like yours. She looks closer at Anna and strokes her blonde hair. Anna's mother was creeped out by that and pulled Anna away from Karen before quickly heading to us for some help. With our help, we assigned Karen and Mary to sit at the very back of the bus whilst Anna's family sat in the front to keep some distance. Once we got to the theme park, everyone was let loose and the parents and guardians are in for a treat. Whilst our staff and students went nuts on the rides and the alcohol, basically just having a blast. Until it was nearing the late afternoon. We were all getting hungry, so we walked over to the food court. There we saw an unpleasant sight. Karen was drinking some beer at one of the far back tables talking on her phone, whilst Mary was asleep in her buggy. We looked at this scene with disgust and walked over. The exchange went as followed after Karen noticed us and put down the phone. 
Karen. Oh, hello there. Me. Hello, Karen. Enjoying the trip? Karen. Oh, jeez, I wish. It's been so boring, tiring, and my feet aches from walking around and it's so bloody hot. She was wearing a tight black dress and tall black heels. Of course she's going to get tired. Me. I see. Did you two enjoy any of the rides? Karen. Yes. Mary enjoys the merry-go-ride more than anything. I want to note that there was no merry-go-round in the theme park. I sat myself, along with two other staff members with Karen, to get to know her and see if she was okay, because I can tell she was kind of tipsy with her skin all flushed. We kept an eye out for her and just kept talking and drinking until things finally took a turn for the worst. She talked about things we couldn't believe. Karen. You know, I never wanted a child, but my husband adopted Mary from one of his African trips because according to him, he felt like he had to, and he sees her as his own flesh and blood. She scoffs as she drinks more. The husband is a journalist who travels a lot. Me. That's nice of him. I'm sure Mary will grow up to be a healthy, beautiful girl. Karen scoffs again. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful my ass. Back in America, beautiful white girls are always the most popular ones in high school. And she mumbles something quietly. Me. Pardon? Karen. Her skin is black. I wonder if, if there was a bruise, would anyone be able to see it? Me. Um... And I look at the two other staff members with worry. But they nodded as they quickly rushed over to Mary to check if she was okay and see if there were any signs of abuse while I kept Karen occupied with idle talk. Luckily, Mary didn't have any signs of abuse, but since Karen was a bit tipsy and tired, one of the staff members took Karen back to the bus to rest while the bus driver kept a close eye on her. We took Mary after getting a drunk consent from Karen and took her on child rides that she would enjoy like the elephant ride, the airplane, and the baby roller coaster and more. We still had our fun until it was time to gather back at the meeting point around the evening. We quickly informed the manager what we had heard and expressed our concern, and the manager took it into consideration. Once we got back, apparently the manager contacted Karen's husband and informed him of what has been said and how she's been treating Mary, and also to pick up Karen since she was tipsy. I'm not sure what the husband did after learning all of that. The very next week, Karen came into the nursery quite early, which was unusual to pick up Mary. Anna and her mother was passing by in the hallway to go home, when suddenly Karen grabbed Anna by the arm and screamed, I want this child! Give her to me! AM says, What the hell is wrong with you? Let go! All the staff members quickly rushed over to the scene to pull Karen away. Anna was crying in pain and fear with her mother grabbing her away from Karen and hugged her protectively. Karen says, I deserve a beautiful white child. Give her to me. She's mine. I want a beautiful baby girl. We restrained her with three men holding her down and we quickly contacted the police and her husband. Everyone was informed to leave early that day, including the cleaners, especially since I was a student. I left early because of the ruckus, but some stayed back to give a witness statement. Afterwards, according to one of the staff members, Karen's husband argued like hell with Karen in the nursery's office and basically threatened to divorce her, which got Karen crying. Karen's husband took Mary, with Karen basically hugging him by the leg, begging him not to leave her and that she was sorry. For a month, instead of Karen picking up Mary, it was either Mary's nanny or the husband. According to one of the nosy staff members, the husband had divorced Karen and got a restraining order against her because apparently when the husband went to visit Karen in jail, she tried to attack him for prioritizing Mary over her and Anna's mum also sued her and got a restraining order. I'm not sure what happened to Karen afterwards, but I hope she never has children of her own. Also, Mary is being well taken care of by her loving father who treats her like a treasure regardless of skin colour and thinks that she's a beautiful baby girl. A lot of the staff members had a crush on him after this incident, lol. And edit, I forgot to add that not all white Americans are like Karen. I only included her background of being American because she kept on talking about her time in America and how in high school it's only the pretty white girls that are popular and good looking. 
No hate towards white American peeps. Now in the comments, anyone who treats children this way deserves the worst. I hope her ovaries dry, her hair falls, and her makeup is always a mess. What a b. No, you should wish on her sudden explosive diarrhea while stuck in a traffic jam with frequent sneezes. Our next post is by user CautiousAd47, titled, You Should Have Bought Me An Apartment. This story is of an entitled aunt, and it dates back a couple of years. Since then, we broke contact and barely see each other. Backstory. My mum has three siblings, one of which is an entitled sister. Let's call her Karen. Aunt Karen is a grown woman. At the time in her late 40s, with a husband and a child, who is my cousin. When my cousin was young, Karen's husband was drinking a lot and basically ruining the life of all of them. She, as a hypocritical Christian, usually only uses the church when it helps her, didn't want to divorce him, because my grandparents would disapprove and stop helping her with money. During this time, they constantly supported her with money so that she can pay her husband's debt, rent, food, etc. She sometimes even lied to them and asked for money for food for the kid while just paying out his debts. My grandpa was still working after he retired, so they were able to support her. The husband eventually stopped drinking and they started building a huge house, so she had to work abroad to get more money to pay for the mortgage. Around that time, my mum and dad decided to buy the house built by my grandparents. They basically offered every child, mum plus three siblings, to buy it. Karen, as the oldest daughter, was offered it first, but she rejected the offer, and my mum and dad were the only ones that took the offer. My grandparents split the money into four equal amounts, giving each kid, besides my mum, the same amount, and keeping one part themselves as my mum's part was included in the lowered price of the house. All of their kids were grown-ups with families, so they figured it's better to give them the money now and not after they die. Each kid received the amount that would cover about 70% of the price of a two-bedroom apartment in the same city, so a fairly decent amount at the time. And if they took a mortgage, it would already be paid for. One sibling of my mum did exactly this and bought a flat, the other one already had a flat, so their family bought some cars and kept the rest. Karen invested the money in their new house, but since it was huge, it drained a lot of money, and they were basically just taking more and more mortgages to pay out the ones before, which also required them to build more and more to get the money released. Basically just paying debt with loaned money all over, and then paying huge amounts on interest. Since they were getting older and the banks didn't want to give them money anymore, they had a hard time and she had to work long hours to pay for it. During all this time, my grandpa, as a construction worker before he retired, was giving them a lot of free expensive equipment to help with the building and still some money to pay for the mortgage, etc. And now on to the actual story. A couple of months after my grandpa died, we met at their house for a birthday party of my cousin. My dad couldn't come at the time, so it was just me and my mum and all the families of siblings and grandma. After grandma went home, because she never stayed long at any party, and a couple glasses of wine, my aunt Karen started speaking to my mum. It started lightly with her complaining about the money they have to pay for the mortgages, to which my mum reacted by shrugging her shoulders, because she knew it's only their own fault they started to build this huge house with just one kid that will probably not even want to live there in the future anyway. And then, like a blizzard, the entitled Karen started blaming us for her situation, telling my mum that it's her fault because my mum didn't buy her an apartment after we bought the house. My mum got very confused, as she didn't expect the sudden change of mood and the hostility created by my aunt Karen. She told us that if we bought her an apartment, she wouldn't have to work so much, and it's only our fault they have debts, and if we bought them an apartment, they would be better off. My mum got angry and told her it's just her fault that she can't manage their own budget, even though she has a degree in economics. Karen started screaming with hate in her eyes that we owe her an apartment. 
completely ignoring the fact that she received a huge amount of money from my grandparents before, and it was only her fault that she didn't invest it properly and started building a huge house, instead of buying an apartment that could have already been paid for. It was not my mum's concern how she uses the money, and she became very sad, since out of all of her siblings, Aunt Karen was her favourite before. She was sad that her sister felt so hurt for all those years saying nothing and pretending all the love while keeping so much hate in her. She also said that even the late grandpa said that she should have received an apartment, which was not true, and my grandma confirmed that it was false, because she received money from them because of their own decision, and not because anyone was obliged to give her any money since they were still alive and the money she received was instead of inheritance money. After this, we left and went home. My dad was furious when we were telling him the story, and knew that she only said anything because he wasn't present. He forbid her to enter our house, and we never visited them since then. This story is a little longer, but it shows an example of a person that can blame her own family for her own poor life decisions. Now in the comments, Just Peachy says, A common trait of a narcissist is that they don't take responsibility. It's always somebody else's fault while they're in a situation they're in. Sounds like your mum or family is just one of the possible many targets to choose from and point the finger. Karen is a scam artist. If a person proposes something illogical, then gets emotional and angry as a smokescreen to hide the fact that their proposal is illogical, it is a scam. And OP replies, I guess that she should be happy that the Indian scam centers don't target my country and she doesn't speak English, or else they would already be on the street. Or maybe she should start doing the calls herself, because she clearly is entitled to a better life in a villa with a huge pool. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below, and make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages, and thank you so much for for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.